in Canada, right? There's there's uh, there's Maestro Fest West. There's Michi Me. They're they're really on the scene in terms of Canadian MCs or mm -hmm. whatnot. Mm -hmm. So Montreal, nobody's really paying attention to Montreal, but something's happening at the grassroots level that could possibly shift a more commercial <coughs> thing, right? Yeah. And then we come to see like a group like Rain Man that comes out. Like, yeah. Rain Man came out in what, like ninety nine, ninety seven, yeah. or something like mm -hmm. that. Just before them, Casey Elemental P shows up doing this sort of like French rap thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that changes a that changes a lot in terms of visibility towards um, well visible visibility locally around a hip hop community and culture in Quebec and in Montreal because we see the people are having growing opportunities to make videos mm. um, so then we see videos come up um, we see. Uh, then we see, so KCL and OP, then Rain Man on the French side, and Muzayan in 2000, yeah, getting say. the record deal in 2000. With BMG. With BMG. Yeah. Muzayan coming from Saint Michel and having their Haitian roots, and they're doing code switching at that point mm. where they're using English, French, and Haitian Creole. They got two guys and a girl, and who's also like who's an MC like she's not just a singer she sings in the group but she's she's an MC that group success really opened up a whole other th yeah. story in hip hop in Montreal where english rap starts to fade out okay. the development and the growth of of potential english mm -hmm. groups becoming commercially viable starts to fade out Hmm. So so where where we all are at a level of this grassroots level for a while, the Haitian kids, because they speak French and because they become like the bigger um, black population in Quebec and in Montreal, other opportunities open up for them. And I think, you know, like people, so the English artists, as many English artists in other genres have to really struggle and kind of iron out this independent thing, but it becomes very hard because as they're trying to figure that out musically, they're also living regular life and regular life in Quebec politics and Montreal society is saying, you have to live here. You want to live here. You got to speak French. So we have the referendum in 1995 and that actually has an impact on, on hip hop community here. Because a lot of people who were in that lane, who were dreaming big, who were thinking they were going to be like backup dancers, be big popular DJs or be MCs and try to pursue what they didn't even realize was an artistic career, they leave. Some of those people leave or they put away childish things, right? right? Because you, you really can't survive. Yeah. There was no way for that generation to be able to survive. We're really lucky to be able, and we're just surviving with mm -hmm. art. See more individual artists grow in the French-speaking Black community as MCs, um, and that's definitely linked to the French artists Dubmatic, Rainman, Musayan, and then Sans Pression, who start to get this visibility in terms of music industry market. But Quite Sane was like, so yeah, he was like the most. Mm. popular DJ like international hip hop DJ before yeah. before we funk like before yeah. you know and he's from La Salle like he, yeah. he's a guy from La Salle yeah. you know I think there's, there's also um, uh, LMDS um, in the francophone side LMDS which was like Les Messagers du Son oh yeah uh, with Vi and Camaro mm -hmm. which became very successful Camaro, um, because of Quebec's um, attention to hip hop, is it's quite small, you know. They went to France. He went to France, especially Camaro went to France yeah. and became really successful. But we're talking about a Quebecois who grew up in South Shore, Longueuil, mm -hmm. who made music here as an LMDS, and then in the early 2000s moved to uh, to France and became successful because the density of population is mm. double, triple, you know? Mm.